how did you deal with the change of uh, brought on from altitude sickness? Um, oh, I just, I mean, I did take some paracetamol and things. I just started to get a headache and just felt, felt a little bit lethargic. And um, yeah. I don't know, it feels, it feels like the, the, the air is just pressing on you a little bit. And I had not prepared for it really because I didn't think you know 3,000 meters I thought oh, I'd be absolutely fine but um I was later told that because of, because of the position on the earth that Antarctica is the effects of altitude are probably more like five or six hundred meters where it's 300 oh, so yeah wow. I did struggle with it and I know from his from having climbed some mount like Mont Blanc and some other mountains that I don't fare too well in altitude at all so yeah it wasn't it wasn't the best finish I remember getting there and going let's get out of here <laughs> <laughs> what effect did that have on your ability to navigate navigation was fine it was basically due south it was due south the whole way um and I had a gps with me and um yeah so it wasn't it wasn't intricate navigating at all it was it was pretty straightforward um have you ever hallucinated from altitude um from sleep deprivation, yes, I have. Um, I've seen all sorts of sort of, you know, when I've been doing my adventure racing, I've seen all sorts of monsters in the hedges and, wow, <laughs> that's crazy. you know, things that not definitely not there. So. <laughs> but no, I was okay in Antarctica, actually. And to treat it, they say you should sort of stop and rest, not go higher and not exercise. So that was completely off the cards for what you were trying to do. Did that like did that have any sort of effect on you like mentally or were you able to just like push through? No, I think I've I've always done this sort of thing like with the adventure racing I do that's kind of nonstop for six days. I might get three hours sleep in six days, um, and you know so I'm pretty used to it. 